Why does it seem like so many Chinese Americans are kind of ashamed of representing being Chinese and speaking Chinese publicly? Let's talk about it. Ooh, this is a deep one. Uh, we got to talk about this. This went super viral on the Asian American Reddit. Andrew, the title goes, does anybody notice Chinese Americans tend to downplay being Chinese around other ethnicities? If somebody who is Chinese does something impressive, there's a tendency for us to attribute it to just an Asian person rather than specifically stating they're Chinese. Same with certain cultural events and so forth. Chinese people tend to adopt American names more readily than people of other ethnicities like Japanese and Korean, but I've went, met way more Sujins and Yukis. Vietnamese and Filipino people also seem more willing to attribute things to their specific ethnicity. My Vietnamese friends are always saying this, how such and such is a Viet thing. Overall, I think there's just a little bit of embarrassment about talking about our Chinese cultural pride, possibly tied to how we've been the majority of the Asian American group for so long, mm -hmm. we feel a little bad and want to be more inclusive. Mm -hmm. Also, Chinese stuff maybe isn't as cool and the geopolitical thing doesn't help. Of course, Amongst the East Asians, Chinese people were, were, routine, were, routinely eat Japanese and Korean food more than the other way around. Yes. I work in an office that is somehow mostly Chinese and Mexican, and my Mexican co-workers love talking about their culture and food and don't have any problem about being honest that they only eat Mexican food. But Chinese workers all sort of downplay it and talk about how they're all into all Asian American stuff, as well as other cultures food. Obviously a small sample size based on my specific life experiences. Wow, pretty on point. I actually agree with a lot of what was said in the OP. I've seen it with my own eyes. Um, so anyways, guys, we're going to delve into it. Why are so many Chinese Americans ashamed? We'll talk about it and what, what you can do if you are ashamed. So please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. But one thing uh, that shouldn't make you ashamed of being Chinese is Smala Sauce. Check it out. Finishing oil from Sichuan to Sicily. SmalaSauce.com and the Instagram at Smala Sauce. Lots of cool content. Very, very good on a lot of different carbs, a lot of different things. All different types of Asian food, not just Chinese food. Yeah. Um. You know, we just gave a speech, Andrew, at a CSA in Boston, mm. and somebody actually raised their hand and asked this question. They didn't ask this question, I guess, as detailed. I'm assuming this OP, Andrew, is out of college. They've they've have more vocabulary and more lucid uh, concepts to explain what they're yeah. feeling. But this is something that has been posed to us over the years at multiple college shows. Agree? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I would say the, th the main points that I thought uh, I were interesting about the post was like, yes, because everybody kind of thinks all other Asians are Chinese, even to this day, surprisingly, especially a certain demographic. Uh, more uneducated yeah, crowd. Uneducated more people are all going to assume everybody's still Chinese to an extent, or you're going to go to that first. So yes, we grow up knowing that. Do we feel bad a little bit deep down? I can see that because you're like, dang, my Korean friends, my Viet friends, even my Filipino friends got called Chinese. Everybody gets called Chinese. Or even the derogatory words for Chinese. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. The, or uh, even in the herb, Ling Ling, that's referring to yes. the name of a panda as well as a pot stickers. Yes. And that's what they, that's sort of a derogatory term for Asian and women then, in certain And then world. I understand that Chinese are, to be honest, the most pan-Asian Chinese when it comes to food taste. Like the foodies, the Chinese foodies, they'll eat all types of Asian food. Like No, I mean, no, from like, uh, Burmese, Cambodian, like Mindanao province, all the way up to like Siberia, to Japan, to Korea, David, everything. We are an example of that. I'm not going to lie. I don't think that's the reason why we do it. But yes, we're Chinese and we eat all different types of Asian food. That's kind of what we've done on our channel, right? Maybe with a slight more focus on Chinese food, but really eating everybody's. And then, um, yeah, I mean, and then I would, I, but I would say in that, and this is my real quick point, is that it's funny enough because low key, there is kind of a lot of Chinese blood or ancient Chinese culture influence in almost all Asian countries. You're talking about uh, the two major spheres of influence, guys, do not be offended. I'm literally just going by what the scholars have said. It was the Sinosphere and the Indiosphere. Yes. Those are the two gigantic civilization spheres of influence from thousands of years ago in yeah. the Asia region. Japan heavily influenced by what? The Tang Dynasty. Maybe the Koreans heavily influenced by the Song Dynasty. I'm not, you know, you correct me if I'm wrong, but essentially it's that. And then, you know, Obviously, Vietnam, they were using Chinese characters as a language for many years. And then there's the French the came and Romanized. There's a lot of Chinese right? diaspora. So, yes, there are a lot of Chinese people from all the different countries. So, I guess, in a way, if you're Chinese and you feel Pan Asian, 
that is partially of an explanation. Right, right, right. By the way, not saying that everybody's Chinese at yes. all. I'm just saying I've seen a lot of Asians, regardless of where they're from in Asia, show up with a few percentage points Chinese on the Dude, 23 of There is Chinese blood in every Asian country. Yes, yes, there, yes. Whether it. it's in an ultra ancient thousands years old way or just a recent several hundred years old way. But anyway, we don't got to get into that. Um, That's Andrew, an ancient justification. How much of it is in the modern day justification being Chinese simply doesn't have the modern pop cultural depth to lean into that Japan, of course, has had it for many decades now. And Korea over the past 10, 20 years also has the depth. Chinese does not have the modern pop cultural oh, depth to, to be cool. Dude, this point is super well documented, guys. Like, we talked about this on the channel. There's, like, this whole... There's a bunch of YouTubers. Like, was it Aini who made a video called, like, Why Aren't Chinese Cool? Or I don't know. Somebody, there's, there's a bunch of videos with a bunch of view uh, hits explaining this with so many words, I'm not right? going to go into why Chinese soft soft power and cult, uh, pop culture is not considered cool. I, Censorship. I There's a million reasons. A million unicism, reasons. Unicism, whatever. Um, uh, how much of it is an easy way to explain it, Andrew? Within class, it's kind of viewed as the least cool. So let's say, for example, we were going to compare Jaguar, like uh, Aston Martin and like a Bentley or something like that. Uh, Chinese of those three would be the Jaguar. Oh. Right, you know, like if you guys know about like Man, ultra luxury, to exotic, Ashton Martin and Bentley. I mean, what about Mercedes BMW? Yeah, especially the higher end Mercedes and BMW right, would right. also eclipse the Jaguar. Right, people yeah. would be like, "Oh, you had a hundred k to spend on a Jaguar, a uh, hundred k Mercedes or a hundred k BMW. Why'd you get the Jaguar?" Yeah, most that one was the is the least coolest with the least best features. Right. Yeah. Also, would you say that there's the same is true, Andrew, for Nissan, Toyota, and Honda? If you get you have the same amount of money and you get the Nissan, would people be like? Why'd you pick the Nissan? That's yeah, the least coolest true. one. You know, De let's talk about some personal stories before we get into the comment section because I feel like we've both had our own slightly different arc. David, you were you ever ashamed of being Chinese? Would you say that? Or how did you deal with being Chinese? Because you felt like you always identified as Chinese almost ever since we could remember. But why? Did you think it was cool? Right. You weren't really into Kung Fu, so I guess that's not like what you were into. You weren't like cooking food at the time. So I guess what what... What? How did you stay I mean, Chinese? I, I was never against Kung Fu, but I never really leaned into it. We had a cousin who did Kung Fu. It was kind of like teaching us some of the Shaolin forms, but I just never really like sunk my teeth into it. But how uh, were you more able got to... into basketball. But yeah, I'll say this. I grew up mostly around non-Asian people. Yeah. White and black people. Of those two cultures, I probably chose to lean more into, at least pop culturally or, or on a physical activity level, black American culture, yeah. rapping, playing basketball, break dancing, things like that. Yeah. Um, within black culture, it's actually kind of cool to be a badass Chinese guy. Right. Whether that's Jackie Chan, Jet Li, he's got shouted out in Jay-Z songs. Jay-Z used to shout out Yao Ming, Wu-Tang Clan, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So to me, not that I knew that that wasn't a hyper-selective view on Chinese culture, because I knew about all the model minority stuff, going to math, becoming a mathlete, being yo-yo mob, playing in you know orchestras and things like that. I knew about that side, but I think for me, in my like scope of environment, being Chinese was like, I was like, yeah, I'm Chinese repping it. It's almost like that's why when Jin came out with one of those six in Park, and even though you could say that single with Wyclef, Learn Chinese was so cringy, uh, both sonically and lyrically, there was also some elements of it that appealed to me mm. because that was my environment. Yeah. So I wasn't thinking about like, oh, our anime and manga and J-pop and J-drama, I mean, I'm sorry, K-pop and K-dramas way cooler than like, Jay Chow and Wang Lee home. Right. Like, even though I knew that, that's not what I personally cared about. Right. So I couldn't be tapped into like this inter Asian hierarchy that I became way more aware of in college. Right, right, right. Because I'm growing up almost thinking like just on some street level yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was just there. almost just like Chinese was the only Asian that people really knew at that time. So, and they're yeah. like, yo, son, you got the beef and broccoli in the wild. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the chicken wings and stuff like that. That was more my perception of it. Mm. So I think in that you go, yeah, there's Tim's called beef and brocks. That's tight. Tim's okay. are tight. Yeah, I'm nah, and, that, and that's a different way to do it. Um, I think for me, I just never like of the Chinese people that I knew growing up outside of our family. Like I never real fully identified with them. So that's why growing up, I wouldn't say I was ashamed of being Chinese. I just didn't know if I was Chinese. I was like, I don't know. I, yeah, I'm Chinese, but like, I don't like relate to these is Chinese it, people. Is it because you weren't that good at string instruments? It's not like you were in the 99th math 
percentile score, yeah, right? Yeah, I wasn't like that. And then I was just like hanging out with my friends at school that were mostly like Southeast Asian that I just, like we were just having fun together. So I just, I just related to more would, like- Would you guys act more fun. wild? Be, be honest. Would you and the Vietnamese and the Filipinos act more wild than the Chinese kids at school? For sure. I didn't relate to the other Chinese kids at school. And then maybe like a lot of the Chinese kids at church, I didn't fully- hey, hey, Some of them did to. go on to work, become what, computer programmers at Google? Yeah, yeah, been, yeah. Been so I was like caught in between. So I didn't fully know. Like I was just like basing it off of the Chinese people I personally knew. Right. So you were just saying like you growing up, you just knew that you weren't like the Chinese kids at church or the Chinese kids at school that were trying to be yeah. ultra studious. I mean, Confucian, I knew Jack sort of socially compressed- Hyper, let's call it what it is, stereotypical, right? I, th I think if you made me say, Andrew, are you like this nerdy kid at school and church, or are you more like a Jackie Chan Chinese, I would have said, yo, I'm more Jackie Chan Chinese, if anything. Right. And if you guys know about Jackie Chan, he's like barely literate. Like he's not that good at reading and writing Chinese. Jackie really. Chan is a wild dude. He, he is a wild Chinese guy. I guess... The truth is, man, being Chinese, uh, there's so many ways to talk about it, Andrew. You're talking, we're talking about it on a personal anecdotal level right now. It's also hyper complicated on an internal domestic level. And we're not even getting into like Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, right. Right, right, right. you know, countries that have a heavy Chinese speaking population that are not Chinese. Uh -huh. We're not even talking about all the Chinese that went to Jakarta, Borneo, mm. Indonesia, Philippines, and started all these companies, right? Right. Like, I guess what I'm saying is, being Chinese, it's almost like being this like fruit mill crepe cake with like 27 layers with all these different fruits in it. And being another type of Asian is almost like being an icebox cake. Oh. You, some people would prefer just the icebox cake. Just, I guess what I'm saying is, being Chinese has so many layers to it, but that doesn't necessarily make it better. But it just makes it more complicated. It is more complicated. Anyway, let's just get into the comment section, guys. Um, somebody said, yes, I've noticed this. And language-wise, Chinese seems to get lost easier than other Asian languages in American-born Chinese kids. Growing up, it always seemed that Chinese Americans rejected their culture the most. Yes, a European friend of mine said, even Chinese people do not want to be Chinese. Sadly, I find that he's correct. It's common for the Chinese diaspora to reject our culture. How true is this? At a higher level than other Asians reject their culture. Yes. I would agree. Yeah, I would, I would agree. say, I would say. I, did not, I think that also goes to show you like Chinese is the most uh, complicated group. It's hard to sum up what it means to be Chinese. Yeah. Um, somebody said, uh, for example, I actually think it's a linguistic thing. Korean and Japanese are less tonal. So they just like sound better to Americans. Uh, yeah, I think that's a small part of it. I yeah, don't think that's it's, it's very part. small. Yes, those are part of the Altaic agent, uh, language family. They don't have tones. Somebody said, um, I think depending on where you are, it can be self-preservation post-COVID. Being Chinese did not get a response from 2020 to 2023. Um, yeah, but this was like, we noticed this even when we were growing up, right? Yeah. I think a lot of Chinese parents don't push Chinese culture super hard on their kids. Oh, they, or they do, but it's in an uncool way. Yeah. So it's like, if you push uncool, uncomfortable Chinese culture on your kids, your kids will reject it. Or if you don't push anything at all, then the kids won't pick it up. Um, this guy said, I'm Chinese American and China has been a major hated U.S. rival for my entire adult life. 2022 made it way worse. Um, somebody just said, I noticed that people treat me better when they think that I am Japanese or Korean. And some people will treat me worse even amongst Asians once they find out I'm Chinese. What does treat you worse? I know what they're saying. The energy switches. It's not 10 out of 10 times, but some people are like, oh, you're not one of the good East Asians. You're the Nissan. Oh. Nissan, because you know, Andrew, everybody knows Ultima energy, Maxima energy is different than how someone goes, oh, Accord energy or Camry energy. So it's very important to have cool Chinese people, man. Yeah. Cool, proud Chinese people. It's very, very important. Yeah. And I noticed that that's why sometimes Chinese, Andrew, just kind of like hang out with non-Asians. Because why would you want to hang out with other East Asians? And then it's almost like you're the old school grandma outside of yeah. East Asian I, I when you like, just go hang out with non-Asians, everybody Chinese anyway. I feel like that happens in very small circles. I feel like maybe I'm trying to think of an environment that it happens more in, but. Yeah, I guess it depends on who the dominant Asian is there in that environment at that time. Um, somebody said, I get mistaken for Korean a lot, even by other Koreans. And I feel like this was an advantage. Um, Andrew, you get mistaken for being Korean a lot. Has it bit helped your life? I mean, like, this is this is just from the Reddit. Uh, Well, yes and no. But yeah, I mean, obviously, if you can be 
broadly East Asian and be viewed as multiple different types of Asians. That's usually, it's like being racially ambiguous. Mm. Except like a Puerto of, Rican or a, like some Yeah, Dominican instead of transracial, it's just like within Asians, you know? Yeah, Trans. I do think that um, Asian Asians, they can be sometimes inter-hierarchical based on what Asian you are. But uh, usually those type of Asians are not the type of Asians that I like to hang out yeah. with. But you do, you do come across it. A lot of being mistaken for another Asian is also just style too. Mm -hmm. style and kind of culture but yeah obviously yeah um somebody was saying you know what a lot of chinese are very intra divisive in terms of intra chinese stereotypes for example beware of mainlanders because they're treacherous oh taiwan doesn't really count anymore because it's become so japanese eyes rural people are dangerous to girls and women is another thing basically this guy was saying that like it makes it like chinese so interdivided because like you could be from anywhere and, and it's just so big. Like basically some of the layers of this crepe cake don't like each other. Yes. Not all the layers of the cake even get along with each other. Mm. Um, somebody said, I hate it when I meet Chinese people and they always introduce themselves as half Shanghainese and half Macanese because this person was saying that they want to associate themselves with their, um, the parts of China that have become more westernized or more economically developed, specifically oh. Shanghai and Macau. Is that wrong? If your family really is from those places and you right. introduce yourself that way. And they do have their own languages. Like yeah. Shanghainese, like... But it, the, the culture is a little... It's slightly different than other Chinese cultures. I mean, I think it more speaks on them and how they identify. Clearly, that person is not trying to connect with all types of Chinese people in a broad sense. But I also think it is hard sometimes to connect with all Chinese people in a broad sense because Chinese people are very, very different. You know what I think is interesting? Is that like... You can view colonialism in a negative way, or you can look at, like, I guess, in a way, especially at a time where China was so far behind, and it still is catching up in some ways, like, the westernization brought them more forward yes, yes, in yes. Macau and Shanghai. For sure. So, I don't know. It's very, very complicated. Somebody was saying that, uh, yep, it's hard to be proud of being Chinese because you have to associate yourself with the pollution and uh, resource extraction and other bad stories that get covered all in the right, Western world. Right. How I, true I, is this? You can't be no, proud of something because then you got to take no, the bad stuff. I, I don't. I don't. I think it depends on the context, man. If you're just meeting people at a party and you say you're Chinese, do you think they're really going to be like, oh yeah, what about the pollution? And what about China's uh, cultural genocide or things right there? Communism, this right? And this and this, like da da da, and it's like. Dude, who does that at a party? You know what I mean? Like, but, but people might feel like I'm saying that it's not that everybody's going to react like that. But I feel like a lot of Chinese Americans that haven't been have haven't gone through their arc. They like they might feel the pressure of I that think, happening, even though let's to your point, it may not actually happen. I think happen. the fear is that's why in a way you got to like cool Chinese people are needed more than ever because when you're a cool person and you're from a certain culture, that's going to change how people view that culture. Right. And those people. So I always thought of Tim Chung, Andrew Kylie Jenner's bodyguard rep being Chinese even more. I think he's pretty whitewashed. Like that would have helped. Like, and that sounds so basic, right? Because it's like, I'm talking about like a, like an Asian Yeah, king. he should have got some like calligraphy Chinese tattoos or something. I don't know. Somebody said, totally agree, and I've noticed this for years. I'm specifically talking about California. I'm half Chinese and half Taiwanese, I think. Um, somebody said, one reason may be because there are so many Chinese here from places outside of mainland, including Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Myanmar, Vietnam, Cambodia, Philippines, Korea, Japan, and more. When people say Chinese, they don't feel the same as Chinese from mainland China, and now they don't want to say Taiwanese or Hong Konger because it's super politically charged. So people just say Asian as a way of getting out of the weeds mm. and not opening up like a hundred can of worms. Listen, I don't think it's wrong to say you're Asian if you want to, depending on the, you know, because I think some people, they do, some Chinese Americans, if you are very, like, into other Asian cultures, you might feel a little bit more Pan-Asian, you know? Right, you're saying like genuinely, you're, genuinely not, you're not doing it to hedge against your, the, your dislike or the unappealing aspects of your original origin identity. It's because you legitimately feel pan-asian yeah i mean maybe you could say chinese american that kind of implies some things or you just say yo i'm asian american or like hey i'm chinese but that person you know dung there he's from china so like <laughs> he's more chinese than me you know this guy like said no matter what 
country your parent, your Chinese blooded parents are from. Everybody has to play piano, violin, ballet, or um, some sort of old European hobby in lieu of American team sports or more culturally relevant activities. That's hilarious that that's mm. true. Number two, she said that everybody called themselves Asian, not Chinese or Taiwanese. And somebody just said, everybody has blatant and extensive hapa worship no matter what, even if the hoppers are not attractive. That is what, to me, bonds together all Sino people. Uh, Hilarious. They just named three whack things, to be honest. That's... And that goes back to the original OP's point. Somebody said Chinese people have been in America for 170 years. The experience of being Chinese-American isn't just a single thing. No. And I think... That's why if you want to specify what type of Chinese or Chinese American you are. Third waiver. I'm a third waiver. Middle class. I'm a third generation Chinese American from San Francisco. Um, Other Asians have only gone through one or two major immigration waves to America. I believe I charted it out one time. Chinese Americans have gone through six or seven and they keep on going. I keep on coming. I am a, I, I gener- I'm a fifth waiver. I guess how... High class. How can... What's the easiest, most practical way for someone who's like a little bit shy about being Chinese? How can they feel more proud about being Chinese? Are there certain like cool, general, cool, acceptable traits or things about Chinese culture that you can share with other people at a, at a shallow baseline? You know, I don't know. I I think that some people try to find it in the ancient civilization, like the abacus or the development of the compass or paper. I think some people try to look at Confucius or uh, Mahayana Buddhism. I think that some people take a look at uh, more uh, like food based things like flat rice noodles. I know that's the basis of pad siu, you know what I mean? Or pad thai. They were originally started by Chinese but Thai but, immigrants. But how does you know? someone be more confident in being Chinese? Man, Do they just have to know you just, more about Chinese culture, maybe? I think you have to know more and just accept that, you know, you can make it cooler. Like, that's how I see it. It's like, yes, I do understand that Nissan, Toyota, Honda analogy. Do I think that Nissan, and you could totally make the argument that Nissan is the least cool out of those three legitimately? Yes, I think that I could see why somebody would rank it number three. Even me, I would not pick Nissan. Right, 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 like, right. I'm talking about cars here, guys. Yeah. But I'm a Nissan, so I'm trying to, like, bring it up. I right. guess that's what I'm saying. I, I got a lot to contribute, but it doesn't mean I can't study Toyotas and Hondas is mm-hmm. what I'm saying. And what makes them better. Even though, let's just say, for example, Nissan came up with the, with the Japanese architecture of an engine first, but then Toyota and Honda made it better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I guess what I'm saying is, you, I don't think about things so hierarchically. Mm. Like, I'm not, like... Otherwise, I'd be white worshiping too, right? Because Anglo Protestants have like dominated the world for the last right, right, 300, 400 years. I'd be like, oh my gosh, they're so much better because the history has shown they're better. Right. The rankings have shown they're better. I'm just like, man, you just can't even look at life that way. Even though, would you agree with me, Andrew? A lot of people do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that that's the main thing. Somebody said, I think it comes from culture, like emphasizing humble as a virtue in Chinese culture. You know, one thing that has helped though is listening to somebody like Kanye, Andrew, where Kanye is like, why be humble if you put in that much work to not be humble? Mm. Literally, I do not believe. I think a lot of stuff gets overapplied. I think Confucianism gets overapplied and things like that. Um, yeah. Ultimately, Andrew, what are your takeaways? We can talk about this issue for 17 hours in a row. We can have an intellectual scholarly dissection of it. We can have an anthropological dissection of it. Or we can just use some modern anecdotes as simple as Chinese church or looking at ultra Western influence pop culture. Right, we, there's so many levels we can analyze it, but at every level we're gonna come to the same conclusion, right? Like it's complicated yeah. and it's not as simple or not as cool. Yeah, and I think that a confident Chinese person that is knowledgeable is very confident because think about it, it's so complicated, so layered, and there's esoteric. so much good and bad imagery. There's the bad things that China does. There's the good things. There's the great products. There's the cool culture. There's the food. There's the movies. But there's also the geopolitical, blah, 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 all these bad things. They're challenging news. Anglo dominance. Yeah. But uh, we like it because we spent uh, so much time to is get China gonna support anyway. Iran in the war. The war is gonna be. That is complicated. I'm not lying. Yeah, that's very weird. But I don't think that most people think about it on that level. So I think if you keep it on a shallow cultural level, there are things that you can be confident about that are cool, that are Chinese, particularly the food, I think is the easiest one to start at. But I just think that it's going to take a little bit more for you to be very confident, but you should be. And you don't have to answer those deep, 
geopolitical questions. You don't have to. No one, who's going to do that to you? That's such a buzzkill. Yeah. I mean, I think, man, it just like is what it is, man. It's so hard to say it and everybody's going to like come up with their own answer for it. I mean, some people are going to disassociate themselves from it. Some people are going to lean in half, yeah, half. Nah. Some people are going to turn a blind eye to things. Nah, you- I, for me, I actually consume everything and I just accept it for what it is, you- man. Like I already ate a lot of the downside growing up of just being a general Asian specifically also being Chinese amongst other Asians and getting judged for it. Um, not to really say that my Viet and Filipino friends in our hometown growing up, which is primary Vietnamese and Filipino, had too much to say about it, but you heard things. But why? And you know what I mean? But I was always just like, hey, man, what can I say, man? I, I didn't do everything good from the culture. I didn't do everything bad, but I'm just, I am that. Why can't people confidently look at someone and say, yeah, I'm Chinese, but I'm not like, the Chinese government, man. So I don't know why you're asking me all these questions or something like right. that. Like you're just a Chinese, you should be confident that you're just a Chinese person or that you come from a Chinese family. Like that's how you say it. Like, yeah, I come from a Chinese family. Yeah, I grew up with Chinese culture. Yeah, that's me. That's my culture. Yeah, I Just know. be confident. You have to just say it confidently and just know where you draw the line and where you're separated from. You don't have to answer for the Chinese government, but you answer because you grew up with Chinese culture. Right. Unless you are part of the Chinese government, but then I think the one that. thing you can honestly look at it is the stability. I'm not saying I'll never tell people that being this like ancient sinospheric, ancient Confucian, you know, Confucius was Chinese culture is the most fun. I'm never going to tell people that the oxytocin diameter is the largest. I'm never going to tell people that it's the most dopamine centric or dopamine releasing culture, even comparison to its like geographical neighbors. But it's just like it's uh, it's a very stabilizing force. It's a stabilizing civilization. And the stability of something matters too. And you value it more as you get older. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think of this in the comment section below. Like I said, there are so many levels and I'm sure the comment section is gonna go crazy. Listen, guys, nobody can control what tribe they're born into. You know, every tribe has pros and cons in the modern day and the mid view and the ancient historical view. There's pros and cons and gray areas and stuff. It depends on which side of the coin you were born onto and things of that nature. Ultimately, what ultimately matters is like where you drive your life. But yes, of course, these things they matter. And Reddit is the perfect place, I guess, for people to talk talk about it. But I'd be more concerned about what you're going to do about it. One more to Hawaii, not to average ABC. We had a show on TV. No need for the KTVs, because I do the damn thing, regardless of the time zones. Accomplish anything that I put my mind on. Make it happen even in a no-fly zone. You just trying to keep a charge on your iPhone. Whoa. Um, let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, we'd hop out, boys. We out. Peace. Peace.